All righty. The task at hand is getting all these fairy houses painted and ready to go this weekend. I'm a little overwhelmed. I broke three, a total of four so far. I I am painting them. This one just fell. Leaf popped off because I dropped it. Um, and this one, it just wasn't strong enough to begin with. It broke when I was making it, and I just set it aside because it was like after everything else was done, the door was on, windows were on, and it just broke. So this one was already broken. And this one I broke while painting it. These two, I think I, so I am painting these with underglow glaze at the bone dry stage. I'm adding water to a pot that is bone dry. Now, not a lot of water, as far as an underglaze is concerned, it doesn't have a lot of water in it. And that's gonna cause the bone dry to expand. Here's the thing that I don't know. Um, when you add water to bone dry clay to reconstitute it, it dissolves. Um, it keeps absolutely none of its structure. It weakens the clay and it dissolves. My thoughts are it's entirely possible that when you paint on an underglaze to something like this, that's doing this, you know, if I was painting an underglaze right here, it probably wouldn't make that much of a difference, but I'm not I'm painting an underglaze to this. And I'm wondering if it keeps that fragility after it begins to absorb that water. I'm thinking it does, but I don't know, something to test. So I'm gonna have to make paper clay. So I'm gonna save this and any other potential fails. Um, mm -hmm for um, later and repair them all at one time and um, try and get them into the kiln. These that I'm looking at here are much closer to leather hard. Um, you can see their, their color is beginning to change, but much more water in that clay. Um, so these should be good to go. They, they should be, uh, but 
I really think that my preference is to paint the underglazes onto bisquare. But with the crawling issue, with the only clear glaze that I have at the moment, that's, that's a whole nother issue. So priority after this kiln load is going to be to formulate and find a decent clear glaze recipe. I think I have one. I don't think it'll be hard to do, but I gotta get it mixed up and I gotta test it and uh, things. So, um, and specifically, I mean, the clear glaze that I have does fine unless it's over under glaze. So I have to test it specifically over under glaze. So, anyway, that will be coming up soon. <laughs> Those will have another chance because of paper clay. Yay! <laughs> Check him out. Isn't he great? Oh, oh my goodness. We are getting this kiln loaded again. I cannot believe it. Thank you. It's all because of God, trust me. Uh, so these were not quite dry enough. And um, I, I didn't feel real, they, they just, they weren't the same color. They weren't the same color. Now they are very much the same color. Get them in the light there where you can see them. Um, I put them in a 200 degree oven for less than an hour. I mean, it really did not take nearly as long as I thought it would for these to get good and dry. How do I know they're good and dry? Because I put in some absolutely fresh, like I thought I didn't have my compacts made because yeah, you know me. Um, but I decided, well, if I make some compacts and I put them in absolutely fresh, then when they're dry, that's gonna be dry. And um, this took less than an hour. It was completely wet to completely dry, like completely dry in and um, at 200 degrees. So uh, water boils at 210 degrees. And um, so you want to stay under 210 degrees. I have a keep warm setting on my oven um, uh, that will go down to like 165 even. This was wet and it's thin. It's about a quarter inch, I guess. Maybe a little little less than that. But I didn't poke any holes in it or anything like that. I did two of them. This is the other one that I did. And um, yeah, dried up real nice in about an hour in the oven at 200 degrees. Um, and uh, 
I figured if anything was going to pop or, um, you know, cause problems, that this would cause problems first before I lost any of my three houses. And lo and behold, less than an hour, we have good and dry fairy houses ready to go into the kiln. And I am so pumped about these fairy houses. Superman, oh my gosh. Superman. No words. No words. All day yesterday, he and his little paintbrush, painting fairy houses. Impeccable paint job on these fairy houses. Isn't that adorable? Uh, he doesn't go outside the lines and it just kind of blows my mind. <laughs> uh, so we are putting this into the kiln for a bisque. We'll get it out, we'll get it glazed. And um, we're down to the wire, man. We are down to the wire. It's gotta get glazed. ASAP and then fired again. So, and then we go on vacation and then we have a party show and all the great things happening. So, thanks for coming. Loading this kiln. size of my kiln shelves roughly. This is a very old antiquated kiln shelf. But my I looked the last time that I laid out my kiln shelves on my actual shelves on this platform, um I didn't estimate enough distance between the wall of the kiln and the sh and the edge of the shelf. Um, but my bats are about half an inch all the way around smaller than my kiln shelves. So that's great. This time I laid it out on my bats and um, it was no problem uh, getting it to fit in the kiln. Obviously it's fist kilns, so it doesn't matter if everything touches, but I think that would make a huge difference when it comes to uh, loading it uh, for the glaze firing. It feels really weird have such a small amount in the kiln and it's not be full, but it has to be done. Um, in the future though, I think after that um, specific trick with the 200 degree oven, um, you know, if I had more than 24 hours, I would probably make a few more things, stick them in the oven, see if they survive the drying out in the oven and um, see if I couldn't get them into the kiln. Now what that's gonna do when you accelerate your drying process, any little fissures or cracks or any kind of, you, you know, you, you don't wanna do anything like that um, that has um, like appendages and things like that on it unless they've already dried out for two or three days. Um, but stuff like this, you know, it's just a slab roll piece of clay, um, you know, test tiles that, you know, you don't ever have uh, room in a kiln for anyway, so you don't ever make them. Um, or you don't think about it until the kiln is loaded and you have extra room in the kiln. And you're like, oh man, should have done some test tiles. Um, from now on, I will definitely be um, taking advantage of the 200 degree oven trick. So um, this is gonna get fired up tomorrow. We may even do it tonight. What time is it, babe? Yeah. I have no idea what time it is. If it is before it's noon. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. <laughs> oh, we may even do it tonight. <laughs> we'll see.
That was yesterday. This is today. We are moving on. We are letting those hang out over here and wait for their paper clay. We are thanking God for paper clay. <laughs> and um, those will have another chance because of paper clay. Yay!